Hi everyone and welcome to this video showing the progress of my giant pastel painting of Portrush's beautiful white rocks. I call this piece Between Showers and I hope that you enjoy seeing the build up of this. I didn't manage to film the whole piece, I've had some technical nightmares during this piece, but what I did film I've included here in time lapse and I also kept a pretty detailed photo diary of this piece too. So I hope you enjoy this. Please do subscribe to me here on YouTube and also consider checking me out over on Patreon as I'm going to be releasing some more in-depth tutorials from this piece. But enjoy the video. So the first thing I do is to get the whole thing sketched out. I'm working on velour pastel paper. I'll add a link in the description below where you can source these giant 40 inch sheets of velour paper. It's great fun but quite a lot of pressure taking on such a big piece. This took me uh, about a month in total working on it on and off most days for a few hours each day. It really tested my patience, this one. And here I'm just starting on the colour work, adding some colour to the horizon, but then taking some time to map out all those complicated clouds. You can see here from the photo reference just how complicated the sky area was. I've never tackled a sky so complicated and it really nearly drove me insane. But in this stage, I've mapped out most of the sky in a mid-tone and then just to the right you can see where I'm starting to come in with both the darker tones and some lighter tones to start and try and pick out the structure within each cloud. And here you can see that I've done that right across. Now everything still looks very blocky and too much contrast here, so now is the time when I start coming in with smaller marks and start to soften everything. So by this stage, I'm really starting to add detail to each individual cloud, which takes a long time because I just didn't realise how many individual clouds and layers of cloud that we're really looking at in this photo reference. I greatly underestimated how long this sky would take me. But that really felt like the running theme of this painting, underestimating how much time would be necessary to complete each little section. Here you can see me with my nose up close to the piece, working on all the little small details in the buildings. And that part of the process takes me another good three days or so just to get right along the horizon. And I really wanted to get each little building as close to the right place as possible as I know so many people from this town and quite often they point out their houses in my paintings. So I want them to be roughly in the right place. And this is just a little bit of detail from that stage where you can see all the little colourful marks used to create the buildings. I haven't really gone into detail in trying to capture every single window. I've tried to keep it more blocks of colour. But even at that and on this painting scale, these little blocks of colour are so tiny. So I was making use of some of my pastel pencils here, along with the soft pastels to really get the sharp edges. So at this stage, I'm coming forward in the composition. I always work from the top to the bottom roughly and from background to foreground. So I'm really layering up the landscape as it comes towards the foreground. So the next part I had to tackle was that beautiful golf course on the top of the dunes. And again, this stage took most of a week, I would say, to create the golf course. Each little mound of grass had different light heading it. I had to be so conscious of where the sunlight was heading the landscape in this piece because it was going to really bring that sky to life and make that dappled light make sense. One of the parts in this painting that I was really looking forward to working on were the actual white rocks themselves. And I love the fact that they're mostly in shadow, so it's anything but using white to create these giant structures. I got to make use of all my beautiful unison blue violets, lots of lilacs. This painting gave me loads of scope to play with light and shade, which is my absolute favourite thing to paint. So for the next while, I did manage to salvage some of my footage from the piece. So I can share some time-lapse footage with you now, how I build up the ocean. Again, this is quite a 
huge part of the painting, so it took me quite a few days just working on this section alone. Just trying to get the flow of the waves as they come into shore. The perspective in a piece like this really is key. If you don't get that natural flow of the waves as they come in and as they disappear off around the bay, it's also important to capturing the realism in the scene. So still trying to create some dappled light, even though I know that the ocean is all the same colours. I'm still trying to use some shadow colours where the clouds are stopping the light from hitting the sea. But then you can also see some bright white on the tips of the foam and those areas are obviously catching some sunlight through the gaps in the clouds. So definitely one of my trickiest paintings to date all because of that complicated lighting. I knew that that sky was going to cause me trouble from day one, but I had no idea just how difficult it was going to be. So at this point, I'm not finished the ocean yet, but I clearly needed a break from working on it, as I start to build in a little bit of the contrast on the foreground cliffs. At this point, it just feels really good to reach the foreground. But before I go any further on the cliffs, I know that I need to get the ocean just behind the cliffs finished so that I can make the nice grassy edges along the cliffs. So I work on some of these foreground waves. I really like the angles that they come around the cliff, giving a real sense of movement to the whole piece. And also because these waves are closer to me, I can see a bit more detail in them, so I'm adding a bit more detail to the foam in these waves. As you progress further into the distance away from you, the waves need less and less detail. But now that I've got those waves behind the cliffs, I can start to work on the lovely edges of the cliffs again dappled sunlight so we've got light and shade. You can see my very messy hand and some of the many green colours and warm tones that I'm using along the cliff edge. But still I have some work to do on the ocean. Part of the trick of a big piece like this is keeping your momentum going and that's something I find really difficult in this piece. I'm not used to working on one painting for an entire month. I like to get things done and out and on to the next thing all the time. So it was really hard to come back to work at the same thing each day and only get a tiny amount done. The way I deal with this and to not let myself get too bored on one area is to jump around a bit. So my switching from the ocean to the cliffs so often is all about keeping my motivation going, giving me a fresh challenge to look at when I'm just bored of looking at complicated waves for days on end. So at this stage, with the ocean finished, I can properly work on the cliffs in the foreground. Like every other part of this painting, it was all about trying to create the light and the shade. Getting those nice dramatic shadows everywhere was my whole goal for the piece. But this giant landscape wouldn't be quite the same without some of the tiny life that was on the beach. So my final task is to add a little bit of life. And it's so small that I'm mostly using the pastel pencils for this. Not going into huge amounts of detail on each figure. But I think it certainly helps just to have some little figures dotted down there. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing this piece and how it builds up. It's not one that I'll want to repeat anytime soon but it certainly does feel good to reach the end of this size of a project. So thanks again for watching. Please do check out all my other content on my YouTube channel. I have lots of tutorials if you'd like to see in more detail how to use pastels. Also check me out over on my Patreon channel for my full catalogue of tutorials and lots more. 
until next time, happy parceling.